Hello, and welcome back to another tutorial. Today we are going to be doing a D flip-flop simulation in VHDL, and we're going to be discussing the code. So here is a D flip-flop. It is able to store one bit of information, um, and it will change that bit depending on its Q input, or sorry, it's uh, yeah, it's Q input lets you know whether or not it's going to switch uh, based on what is coming in with D. So basically your D is what you would want to store bitwise, and then you use Q to either reset and, you know, get the value back down to zero. No. Or you can do Q to, let's see, let's say Q goes to zero. I see, yeah, so it's a memory buffer. So you're able to take a bit of information here and whatever that information is, you can hold it here as long as the clock doesn't change. So on a single clock cycle, you know that you'll always have the correct D value from the previous clock cycle, right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and start from the top. So you know, when we start our projects, we always start in the project window. And usually this is all you see. So we've got our test bench. You should always write your test bench first, um, just because that's test-driven development. All right, so we're declaring a couple of our external signals. Um, these external signals are what we're actually looking at in the test bench when we see those nice little green lines. Uh, we set up our component. So that's gonna be the actual device itself. Now it's important to recognize that the signals, XD, XQ, X reset, and X clock, those are not connected directly to the D flip-flop. Those are connected through the D flip-flop's ports to the actual logical operation of the D flip-flop. So once we've defined that, we can begin. Now the DUT is our flip-flop. Now we can actually do a port map. So this is where we're actually wiring up this flip-flop to these signals. And then we just oscillate a clock and stimulate and then also reset every once in a while. Notice that this code contains no logic about the functionality of the D flip-flop. All right, so here is our actual D flip-flop. Once again, notice that this, so this is our VHD D flip-flop code. Notice that we have the exact same port names here, right? So even though this is done like this, they still both say, okay, here are my ports. They're either in standard logic or out standard logic. And of course, standard logic comes from IEEE.standardlogic1164. All right, so this is our actual D flip flop and what I want to do is tell you how this matches with that picture I showed you. All right, so on clock, if we're at the rising edge, right, right here, arrow up to one. Then if we're resetting, if Q. Oh, this, oh, okay. This D flip flop has a reset value as well. That isn't shown here. So this isn't, this is actually not totally true about this because this is going to also have a reset input.
So if we're resetting, we reset. Otherwise, you just get D. It's that simple. So going back to model sim. This is our simulation. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the simulation. So now we're back in our project view. Uh, if you recall from previous videos that I've made, these little green check marks mean that these successfully passed compilation. So what you do is when you add your files, you right click here, or you click here, left click, left click, compile all. And then you're gonna get a bunch of stuff here. And if you've been really good, you will get two green sentences here that say it was successful. And now you can do simulate, start simulation. Remember, you always go down to work. This is all a bunch of other stuff. You go down to work, which is where your stuff is actually at. D flip flop test bench. Okay. Now remember, you have to add your waves. Now, this value here is gonna be how much it steps. And that is dependent on what we defined in our test bench, right? So in our test bench, the clock is going at a rate of one cycle per 10 nanoseconds. So why don't we just step at 10 nanoseconds and watch it go? Okay, so as you can see, you can't really see a lot of definition here. If we do this, okay, now we can actually see some action. All right, so X reset. Okay, so we're watching D. Um, Q is getting past. So D starts out as one, that's fine. But then, yeah, Q is getting past 2D here. And then the reset is applied. So D goes back to one. And then we, what did we do here? What did we do there? It's not resetting. Well, the Q input is zero. So the D input is zero, the output is zero. Sorry, the D input is zero, so the Q output is zero. And here you notice this is that delay, right? So this doesn't update, this Q output doesn't update until the D input has had a cycle, an entire clock cycle of, um, of value. And then we do another reset which gets our output back down to, back up to one. And then we put in another bit and our output goes up to one at the next clock cycle again. So notice that this transition, that the reset transition is instantaneous. The DQ is not. And that's about it guys. Um, <coughs> You know, closing thoughts are that the D flip flop is pretty fundamental to memory uh, and buffering. And, you know, you use it a lot whenever you need to like synchronize a signal, right? So, you know, you, you can imagine a scenario where you use like eight of those D flip flops in parallel. Different datas are coming in at different times, but they all are going to be output at the same time because you have lined it up to your clock. That's my air filter taking off. I'm gonna check out. Thank you for watching.